everybody. Let's all be standing and singing Shine Jesus Shine. Yeah. 
Anybody? Anybody got a birthday? That's it. Oh, man. All right. Let's see. Anything else going on? Any announcements? No announcements. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I learned some stuff at the first service. Uh, please keep the Steve Bride and Cindy in your Stevens in your prayers. They go to the, the casual service. They are both ill, but they are they're getting better. And and Brian is uh, he has been uh, offered a job opportunity, and he's. He's working through that, so pray for his discernment uh, process. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jaden is uh, Jaden stays with uh, Kelly's little uh, foster guy. He is like getting sick a lot by throwing up, so they don't know why. As far as I know, so keep. Jaden in your prayers. Uh, Sue Johnson is he's the oncologist this week and got a good report from her surgeon that she saw this last week. So please keep Sue in your prayers. Uh, what's uh, oh, and, and we had a great parents' night out last night. Um, good time was had by all. And oh, Marissa, did you want to tell them about the? Super fun youth deal. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to. I mean, we do. We, we, do. we talk. We share a lot more in the first service. <laughs> this service, we've been told to keep it to a minimum. So I'm just, just don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. The youth group had a 30 hour famine, Ooh. which we cut a little bit short. It wasn't quite 30 hours. But we uh, spent the night at the church and learned about culture in a third world country where they don't have access to clean water and could eat maybe four meals a week. So we got to experience and learn about an entirely new a situation while we were fasting. So the youth group um, really, in, I don't want to say enjoyed, because we were fasting. <laughs> but we had a really good time. So I'm very thankful that we have a youth group to be able to do those fun things with. Amen. Amen. I got to participate. I got to help them break their fast at the farmhouse cafe in Frontenac. So I, I got to be part of that, part of the experience. And uh, I didn't just break the fast, I, I crushed it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good, good, once again, good time was had by all. Um, all right. What else is happening? Um, I don't know of anything else we need to share. Anyone else have something to share? Okay, well, we'll keep things moving. We'll get right on to worship. We will worship what we came here to do, worship Almighty God. Please join me now in our affirmation of faith. I believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. And I confess him as Lord and Savior in my life.
Let's begin on our prayer time with a moment of silent meditation. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for your presence here today and every day. And we humbly ask that your spirit would fill each of us, draw us close to you, make your presence known here among us. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have given us the gift of prayer that uh, we have a way to, to talk to you, to share our needs, our, our concerns, our hopes, our dreams. We give you thanks that you are always available, anytime, anywhere. Even if we're not aware of your presence, you are you are always, always with us. Caring for us. And we give you thanks for this, Lord. We give you thanks for this beautiful day. We give you thanks for Irene and Sandra's birthdays, and we ask your blessing upon them and their families. We give you thanks for the youth group experience Friday night and the Saturday morning. We give you thanks. There was a, it was a blessing upon the group. And we give you thanks for Marissa and, and her many, many ministries in this church. She is truly a blessing to us. We give you thanks that Sue got good news from her surgeon and we continue to pray for healing for her comfort and your blessing upon her and her family. We ask for healing for Jaden and peace and comfort for him and your blessing upon his family. We also ask for healing for the Stevens and for uh, your spirit to guide Brian and as he navigates this new job opportunity. And we pray all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Oh, it's me? Oh. It was. That's why I keep hearing Mickey Mouse. I keep doing that. Oh, man. I got to get that checked out. Well, that's, thanks for helping me with that. I had no idea why I kept hearing Mickey Mouse. Man. This guy's good. I really, really appreciate our, our friendship. Hey, did you guys know that, you, that God will, will talk to you? He will guide you. Yeah. Can you think of a time that God guided you? He told you what to do? I know you had your hand up right there. Figuring out problems. Amen. Yes. When you pray, you just know that you're praying. Absolutely. Wow. That's right, guys. Yeah, he can help you figure out problems. Yeah, help you. When you pray, he hears you. You can hear him. But yeah, God really will help you out. You just got to just gotta listen. You got to ask him to help and, and, and listen. He really will. He really will help you. Because I know sometimes we get scared and we get real anxious and stuff. And we, we can't, we got a lot of thoughts going on in our head. But if we just chill out for a second, just breathe, ask God for help, we can hear Him. He will guide us. Yeah. Heck yeah. And sometimes He, he tells us just how, how good things are just by, with the sunshine and the, the sound of the birds, yummy food, <laughs> hugs from, from people we love, all sorts of different ways. He he shows us he cares. He tells us he loves us. So many ways. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You guys are pretty cool. Sure are. All right. Well, hope you guys keep having an awesome day. I love you. Let's pray. Repeat after me. God, I love you. God, I love you. Help me to love others. Help me to love others. As you love me.
Jesus last supper with his disciples before he was crucified the night he gave them what we call the Lord's Supper. There was a lot of drama. There were, uh, there were one of the things was the disciples were arguing about who was the greatest among them. And I, I wonder if when Jesus gave them the bread and the cup, if they really heard him. They really listened to him when he said, this is this bread, this is his body that he gave for them. And the cup was the blood of the new covenant. His blood poured out for the forgiveness of their sins. I wonder if they really heard that. They really heard that their teacher, their Lord, their Messiah was giving himself for them in the bread and the cup. Truly giving them what they needed. That he was bread for them. He was drink for them. What they needed every single day of their lives. And what they needed for eternal life. He was giving that to them. Of himself. I wonder if they, they, they really heard that. That night in the midst of. Whatever else they had going on. All the other nonsense that was running through that evening. I wonder if we really hear that today. We really hear, when we hear about the bread and the cup, that we hear that it is truly, that it, it, it symbolizes our Lord Jesus, that he gave his life for each and every one of us. He loves us that much. He gave himself for us. His body was broken. His blood was poured out for each and every one of us. I hope we all hear that today. Amen. Jesus took the bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Dear Almighty God, you are so powerful. And you gave your only son to die for our sins, even as we were just the only one. You have blessed us so greatly in our lives. And yet, as mighty as you are, you take the time to listen to us and to hear us. And may we take the time to listen and hear you as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now let us eat of the bread of life and drink from the cup of salvation. <coughs>
him, Peter and James, and his brother John, and led them up high on the mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my Son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This ends the reading. Now, most of you have probably heard this story, but just uh, please bear with me. The Zen master was walking in silence with his disciple along a mountain trail. When they came to an ancient cedar tree, they sat down under it for a simple meal of rice and vegetables. After the meal, the disciple, a young monk, monk who had yet to found, find the key to the mystery of Zen, broke the silence by asking his master, Master, how do I enter Zen? Now, he was inquiring how to enter the state of consciousness, which is Zen, which is a state of being fully present, free from the constraints of ego, and open to the wisdom of the universe. The master remained silent. Almost five minutes passed while the disciple anxiously awaited an answer. He was about to ask another question when the master suddenly spoke. Do you hear the mountain stream? The disciple had not been aware that there was a mountain stream. He had been too busy thinking about the meaning of Zen. Now, as he began to listen for the sound, his noisy mind subsided. At first, he heard nothing. Then... His thinking gave way to heightened alertness, and suddenly he did hear, very faintly, far off in the distance, the mountain stream. Yes, I can hear it now, he said. The master raised a finger, and with a look in his eyes that was in some way as, as, as fierce as it was gentle, he said, enter Zen from there. The disciple was stunned. It was his first satori, or flash of enlightenment. He knew what Zen was without knowing what it was that he knew. Yes, they continued their journey in silence. The disciple was amazed at the aliveness of the world around him. He experienced everything as if for the first time. Gradually, However, he started thinking again. The alert stillness became covered up again by mental noise. And before long, he had another question. Master, he said, I have been thinking. What would you have said if I, if I hadn't been able to hear the mountain stream? The master stopped, looked at him, and raised a finger and said, Enter Zen from there. Yes. I, I laughed out loud when I reread that yesterday afternoon, and I, I could not tell you why I laughed. I just knew it was funny without knowing why it was funny. And that's a similar experience to what Peter, James, and John went through in our scripture reading, uh, except uh, dialed down quite a bit, like from 11 to about 0 0.5, much more down-to-earth sort of experience. For the, for the monks. Yes, I imagine Peter, James, and John were fully present when Jesus was transfigured, free from the constraints of ego and open to the wisdom of the universe. They experienced a flash of enlightenment, or more like a, a supernova of enlightenment. And in that moment of heightened receptivity, God the Father told them, to listen to his son, Jesus. Now check this out. The word, uh, I think it was, was it tense in our, our uh, 
scripture. I'm realizing that my the translation I'm using is not what's going on the screen, so bear with me. Uh, but anyways, I've got dwellings and tents. Um, that, that's what Peter offered to build for Jesus and Elijah and Moses. That can also be translated as tabernacles. Does that sound familiar? Tabernacles? Yeah. The tabernacle was uh, the ancient Jews' mobile sanctuary. It was their, their tent of meeting all the way up until the temple, the King Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem. And, uh, and temporary huts were also part, building temporary huts were part of the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles, which in some Jewish traditions was associated with the arrival of God's kingdom over all the nations. And then there's the bright cloud that overshadowed the disciples. That symbolizes, it sounds a lot like the, the fiery cloud that uh, symbolized the presence of God that hung over the uh, Ark of the Covenant, which was kept in the tabernacle when they, when they stopped a long, long time ago. And all this imagery is meant to tell us that Jesus is our tabernacle. Jesus is... God's presence. He is God's presence with us. He is our center. He is our meeting place. He is the source of light and life. So can you hear the light? And no, that's not a line from a late 60s psychedelic rock song, man. It's really, can you hear the light? Can you hear Jesus? He's with us, always. Via the Holy Spirit, He can communicate with us. And I know that uh, visions are usually where it's at. They say, seeing is believing. And uh, if you've got a voice, if we've got voices in our head, we, we might need medicine. But we can truly listen to Jesus. And I know there's the, the scriptures, the Bible, we have the Jesus' words. But He will also offer commentary. And the reason we haven't heard his voice, or we don't often hear his voice, is because we're not listening for it. We're like that young monk who couldn't hear the mountain stream until he really listened. Yeah, got to really listen. You all, you've probably seen the 13th Warrior. Anybody? Hands up if you've seen the 13th Warrior. Yeah. It's one of the, the films of all time. It did not do well at the box office. It lost money. And, uh, and it's, uh, a friend of mine, I found out a few years back, a friend asked another friend if he'd seen that movie. And he said, no. He said, I think it's the kind of movie Dustin likes. So that means it's not a very good movie. <laughs> I thought it was great. I like almost all movies. And one of the things it did, I don't think I've ever seen this in another movie. Uh, it showed this guy learning a language. And the, the story is, I, I promise not to ruin it, but I won't tell you the end. But this guy, played by Antonio Banderas, so that already makes it a lot more interesting. Okay, he is a, a Moor. He's from a, a, a Muslim country, and this is around like the 8th century or something. He's the 80, 80. And he winds up meeting this group of Vikings. He's been, um, what do you call that, kicked out. Uh, you can't go and you can't ever come back. Exile. Been exiled because he got to be too friendly with a very powerful man's wife, which is how it usually goes. And they kick him out. So he's wandering around. And he's like a poet. He's a mathematician. He's a really smart guy. Meets these Vikings. They get a messenger from another group of Vikings far away that says this kingdom is in trouble. They need help. And so their, their shaman lady uh, does some stuff with some bones and decides, okay, they need 13 warriors. She's going to send 13 warriors. All 12 of them are Vikings, but one is not a Viking. And there just happened to be Antonio there who's not a Viking. And like, hey, you're going to this place. Well, he doesn't speak any their language at all. But along the way, the way the filmmaker shows him learning is um, because you could tell at the beginning he's speaking English with his traveling companion. Uh, every once in a while there's a word of English. He hears one of the Vikings say a word of English to show you that, oh, he's gradually getting it. 
And finally, there's more English as they travel along, travel along, there's more, more, more. And then one night, they're sitting around the campfire, and all the Vikings are now speaking English. And then he jumps into the conversation, and they're all shocked, like, how did you learn our language? And he says, I listened. Yes. We got to listen. I mean, listen. You got to listen. Like, he listened. So great. So, what a greatest. Uh, I've never seen that in another film. I'm, I'm still impressed. And I hope you are too. But yes, when we really listen, like a foreign language, I hear a foreign language, like, I don't know that language. I don't even try to understand. But what if we tried to understand? Be the same way, listening for God's guidance. Maybe we don't understand it personally. This isn't for me. I'm not a super spiritual person. I'm not the kind of person that sits and waits for God to tell me something. That's for somebody else. Go ahead. Give it a shot. Listen. Also, uh, I had something else uh, realized, a realization just this morning, just hours ago. So we read that story about the monks yesterday afternoon. I thought about it early last week, and I thought, I'm never going to find that. I'm never, there's no way, I know I knew it was in one of my books, but I thought, it's like a needle in a haystack. But then, there's Google. So I Googled it, and I, I put in the author, I'm pretty sure, put it in his book, and I was able to pinpoint it and find it, and reread it, and it was even better than I remembered it. It was awesome. And then not long after that, I went for a walk with my wife Julie and our dogs, and it was one of the best walks ever. I was like the monk, the, the young monk. Everything was new and alive. Every, it was great. I, I, I kind of felt, imagine myself in like saffron robes walking along. I mean, I got the haircut. So, oh, it was so fun. So good. And uh, then later, um, Let's see, what well, was this morning when I was walking in the building? I was looking up at the stars, and there's a half moon, and, and I, I, I can just get locked into that. When I see something just beautiful like that, I, I, I just I feel like I've got to absorb it, absorb it. And I, I haven't been able to determine why until just a few hours ago. For years I've done, all the way back, I remember the first time back in the summer of 99, I was doing a lot of swimming that summer. I was, I was getting in shape because I, uh, well, I was, I was 25. And there's a thing that happens to some people when you get into your 20s, when your metabolism says, bye-bye, and uh, your waist just shoots out in every direction. And that's what happened to me. And I, so I decided to fight it back. And so I, I would finish my swim and it was at this lake where I grew up, and my mom still lived there, and I'd sit at the beach in the shallow water, and I'd look up at this hill, and in northeast Kansas, we have real hills. It's an honest-to-goodness hill. It's not dirt pushed up for an overpass. It's real hill with trees, some houses, beautiful, really beautiful. I just look at that, and the sun would be kind of behind it, and uh, it was amazing, and I just felt myself like, I've got to soak all of this in. Or something like I was recharging a battery or something. Then years later, I went to this huge retreat for three summers in a row in, in, in Colorado at the YMC of the Rockies, surrounded by mountains. And there was this, we'd call it a mountain, they call it a foothill. I'd go up to that top of that just about every morning before all the kids got up and watch the sun come up and just sit and look at the mountains. And I had that same feeling. I got so all this in, in, in. I get enough. Like I, I, I had to get enough. Before I left, you know, I, I, it was bizarre. I couldn't figure out all these years, why do I do this? Why do I do this? Until this morning. And because of reading that story about the, the, the monks, and this is, this is more of my uh, spiritual crash test dummy that I see as part of my, my service to you all. I realized it wasn't what I was looking at. It was how I was looking at it. Because when I look, when I look at the night sky, when I look at trees and birdies and beautiful things and mountains and hills, I don't judge it. It's like God looking at his creation when he finished. He said, it was good. And it was good. That's the way I feel. It's good. It's fine just as it is. I don't have any expectations of it. It doesn't cause me any stress. I don't judge it. It just is as it is. 
and it's, it's wonderful. And then I realized I could do that with everything else. I, cause I, I, I looked up at the night sky before I, I came into the church this morning, and then I just replaying that in my head when I had this realization. I, I look at that, it's wonderful, and then I gotta get into the building, I gotta find the key, gotta get in, and then everything I see is stress. Everything has to do with work I have to do. And then I get in, I look at my desk, which is the perpetual mess. Like, oh, what a mess. And I gotta get on the computer, I gotta get everything started. But when I decided, it's, I realized it's how I look at it, I saw my desk as if I had stepped into the office for the first time. I had no judgment on my mess. It just was. And it's all really neat stuff. Useful things. And then the computer. I looked at the computer and it can do some really great things. I can make words. I can read stories and watch videos. What a, what a wonderful thing. Just as it is. And it was everything came to life. It was wonderful. It really, I've read about this sort of non-judgmental awareness for years, but that was the first time I realized I was, I was experiencing it. I knew I was experiencing it. And, and we all can do this. We all can do this. And I, I realized, too, that I have, uh, in my relationship with Jesus, I, I have put things in the way. I have things that caused me stress relating to Jesus, mainly because... We have a lot of people in this country who are say, believe they follow him, but have very, very different ideas about what that means than I do. Some people that I don't know, uh, that seem to have left out the love your neighbor as yourself, or even love, has absolutely left out the love your enemies part, and, and don't see the Jesus Christ who accepts all people and loves all people and calls all people to himself. Uh, and I, I realized I was trying to, I don't know, get all those people to, to, to be the way I, I think they ought to be, focus more on what was wrong than what was right, than my relationship with, with my Lord. I've got to get that right first and foremost, because that's the most important. So I can't, I can't let anything get in the way. No judgments, no baggage, just Jesus as, as I know him. So I was, through the, all of this, I was able to reconnect with him and, and hear him without any noise, without any distortion, just pure Jesus, 100%, and it's possible. Unfortunately, because of the way we're, a lot of us are wired, especially me, it does, it takes some effort. Some people just have that direct, glorious line, I don't. I pray it's a lot, a lot easier for you. To listen and to hear. And when you when you listen, listen, and you hear Jesus, start there. And if you listen and you can't hear Jesus, start there. Amen. And if you can hear Jesus telling you to become a member of this congregation, we ask that you come forward during or after our invitation hymn, seek ye first. Standing please.
and loving God, we give you thanks for this time of worship. We give you thanks for the presence of your spirit in our lives. Help us, Lord, to listen to your guidance always. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>